and we are back from the field here at Ubic office in Taipei. Next up, we are reviewing and presenting to you the Network Operation Control Center, the software that we are using for ourselves to deliver a turnkey solutions as an operator for Type R. First, uh, we review the Network Operation Center. I'm going to give the floor to Fabien to share that with you. Yes, thanks. So yes, we are back from uh, our little trip in Mugu district, uh, west of Taipei, where we did install a DCU this morning on a pole. So uh, I, what I want to show you now is actually the uh, tools we use to visualize uh, the overall network coverage and, and health. So the DCU that we have installed, we can see is already online here, and uh, we can visualize actually directly the DCU itself directly pinpoint on Google Street View. So that's a building we've seen covered this morning by the DCU that we have installed on the electricity pole that we see here. So that's where we are coming from and we can directly see that from here and already see all the meters and fan communication modules that connect to the DCU. So the deployment is typically installing the DCU first and then the communication module in the meter in the area uh, but there are already 150 uh, that are connecting to that DCU, uh, but there are probably more to come when the deployment team keep deploying the fan in the area. But we can already see in real time that the fan are connected and sending their data reliably, and we can already look at the coverage of that DCU. So if I zoom in on the coverage of that specific DCU, let me zoom in, you will see here in purple the coverage of overall coverage of our network in the area. But if I zoom in on that specific DCU, you will see the coverage and signal strength around the DCU. So we can review uh, the actual coverage delivered in the field, make sure it matches with our estimation and planning. Uh, because we do run uh, our own site selection algorithms where based off the data set of Taiwan Power location where we could install base stations, we do run our algorithm to optimize the number of base stations installed and the coverage. So it will select for us where we should install those base stations. So after installation, we will have to review uh, whether the DCU do deliver as expected or not. And, uh, and uh, that's what we use as a tool for doing that. So we can, for instance, here in that case, already see that some fan 1.4 kilometers away are connecting to that DCU. So already as a rough estimate, we can say that the coverage from the DCU will be, will be suitable for the neighborhood buildings that we have just seen. So one thing to mention is that the visualization uh, is actually real-time, so it, it directly gets the data from our, uh, from our servers that our data scientists and, and AI team has developed, and fetch the data in real-time from our wireless system. So we will have a real-time view on how many devices are connected, signal strengths, health of the network, which device might connect and disconnect, we have all that in real time. So that's the type of tools that our network operation team is using on a daily basis to monitor the health of the system and make sure we deliver to spec, meaning we have to deliver 95% of the data every four hours to type over. And uh, yes, so that, those are the tools that uh, Ubic have developed to achieve that. And those tools are the ones that are critical to provide this overall solution. It's all in-house, and this is what I wanted to share with you in this, in this specific part. In the next part, we'll look at the other software that we use uh, as part of the software interfacing to the overall project for Type R. And now, let's review the software architecture that we use for the advanced metering infrastructure that we do for Type R. I leave it to Fabien to walk you through the different software we use, and we have the databases that we are performing for Type R. Thank you. Yes, so uh, maybe just uh, to uh, remind the architecture of the overall system. So we have covered already uh, in detail the fan communication modules mm -hmm. and the smart meters, uh, and then communicating with the DCU to collect the data, and the DCU then using 4G or in some cases wired like ADSL as a backhauling back to the servers to our pass platform. Uh, 
also good to mention here that we also do use a little bit of narrowband IoT devices. We covered in details that we have hybrid deployment uh, methodologies for wireless, uh, but in some cases as well, where the, for instance, the density of devices is very low, then actually installing the uh, base station does not necessarily make sense, economical sense. So we do use for less than 3% of our devices narrowband IoT fan communication module also designed by Ubic and that integrate into the same platform using the same communication protocol as our wireless fan. So integrated seamlessly into the same platform. So in terms of platform, yes, we do provide actually the complete solution to Typeholder. So we not only install and maintain this hardware, but also have to provide the backend and the head-end system processing the meter readings and, and storing as well that for six years and provide the data to type our uh, meter data uh, management system or MDMS. So actually this infrastructure also has a stringent requirement. It needs to be highly available uh, and, and reliable. So actually this uh, is now managing uh, 200,000 meter as of today are deployed with more than 1,000 base station. So actually the core network, with this core network and the head-end system have to manage more than 20 million messages every day. So we have a database that actually grows by more than 100 gigabytes every day that we need to make sure will be reliably stored over the years and as always available if type power needs to read it back. So we have to use a, a redundant architecture for our database. We have to have the main site in, in Taipei and we also have a backup site uh, in the middle of Taiwan with all the fallback and disaster prevention mechanisms such that if the Taipei site goes down, all the traffic will be switched to the backup site. Mm -hmm. and as soon as Taipei is back, we have to revert back within 20 minutes to Taipei site. So we have all that infrastructure in place uh, in, 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 a, in the directly Thai Power Headquarter uh, data center where we have put all our equipment and software. I would also like to point out that actually when we use 4G backhauling, all this network is actually completely private to Ubic and there is a dedicated line from our mobile operator directly to Thai Power. So this is all inside the VPN. It has no internet access whatsoever. So it's an entirely closed system for security reasons, obviously. Uh, so this is all managed by Ubic from the networking side of things to the server backend and data processing and crunching as well, where our platform is managing the DLMS COSEM, on-demand queries, firmware update of the devices, all that is managed by our platform. And what we provide to TypeOR is the actual meter readings and uh, interface with the MDMS. So uh, I have a few slides just to show an example of the head-end system. We cannot show you the real one because that's actually type of property and the data uh, is type of our property, but it's just to give a summary of what the head and system uh, can do. So this is, for instance, showing the overall network and where are the meters, and you can click on the meter and see the exact location. You can see data about that meter or metadata, the address, the meter type, all those city ratios, those kind of information. Uh, and then you have, obviously, a dashboard that will summarize the number of connected devices, meters, base stations. Uh, so as of today, as I mentioned, we have 200,000 devices connected, uh, more than 1,000 uh, DCU online already, because we actually deploy them ahead of time compared to the fan communication module. So indeed managing about 22 million messages uh, every day, each message being 40 to 50 bytes in average. So that's a large amount of data that needs to be constantly processed. And the requirement is for when a meter generates data every 15 minutes, it has to reach type power MDMS system within 15 minutes at 95% reliability. So our system and backend is all designed to meet that requirement. And we do pass that requirement uh, with, uh, with our architecture and system architecture. And just to see some uh, of the requirements of the head-end system can also uh, allow you to dig into the actual meter readings themselves. So for instance, you can look at the detail of a specific meter. So you will see the kilowatt hour, so the energy consumption uh, across time, 
but also other metrics that the meter is reporting, uh, like the current and the voltage uh, that are also recorded uh, and sent over the same uh, infrastructure. Every hour, for instance, we have additional data that the meter reads and sends back to the LNC system. So, uh, those are all the features of our hidden system that is deployed inside Type Power and we operated essentially by Type Power or by our operation team located inside Type Power headquarters here in Taipei. And so these are the software platforms we have done for Type Power. We have those capabilities in house as well here and we could always customize uh, those capabilities for other projects. So perhaps as a way to wrap it up. Uh, the main message we want to do for the visits that we have taken you through is from the meters to the DCUs, the challenges that we overcome using Wakeless LP1 as the main connectivity uh, provision, and the work that we do when we install them, the challenges we overcome by making those hardware, and working on the telecommunication network, including the core network, being a telecom operator, and actually turning that into a full turnkey solution including the software platform. And all of this is a manifestation of what Ubic has done, Ubic can do, and how we do it to the extent that we can share. And I guess the main key as a conclusion is that uh, this is a differentiation for us to implement Weightless and turn that as a very strong um, performance boost for our customers, for them to increase their operations, such as is the case for Type or AMI. Weightless can be used for other applications in the overall field of industrial IoT, but that's another story. <laughs>